My name is Dong Gyun Park. I'm head of forestry program in CSD lab, as well as a lecturer of Dongguk National University, Department of Biological Environmental Science. Today, I will talk about RDD Plus on the Paris Agreement. My topic consists of five, six chapters, environment and development, forest and climate change, global warming and climate change, UNFCCC and climate change, and finally, RDD Plus and climate change. And I will introduce carbon markets. First, environmental and development. Issues on development and environment. What are the big problems we face these days? Between environment and development and economic growth is most big issue. Population increase and resources are depleted. Decrease in food production and safety issues. Deforestation and desertification, and plus environmental and industrial pollution, especially waste and plastic. It caused reduced biodiversity. And why and what? Here we have to think about externality and economic costs. What is externality? Externality is a cost or benefit caused by a producer that is not financially incurred or received by that producer. And externality can be both positive and negative and can stem from either the production or consumption of goods or services. Here, externality means production of goods and services. And global warming and climate crisis, as you already know about these things. And these days, health issues during COVID-19 pandemic. So, the concept of SDG and green growth will transform our world into a better place to live together, announced by UN in 2015. We have to challenge all these issues and problems. So let's look at SDG and environment. Prioritize the environment first and targeted developing countries. The SDG try to harmonize the environment and economic development at the same time. Emphasizing that not only developing countries, but also developed countries should participate. SDG is mentioned in Transforming Our World 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development adopted by UN. And they have 17 goals and 15 of target with SDG. SDG is mentioned uh, Transforming Our World 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development adopted by UN and 17 goals and 169 targets. And especially uh, targets goal 13, goal 15 are most important and economic growth, social development, environmental sustainability are equally important. Now, the basic and most important thing in our, is our nature. In other words, it refers to ecosystem, wildlife, river, mountains. So the, the biosphere is the bottom of this figure. And then 
society. Will be the society we live in. And then we need material things to reach a minimal human life. That is the economy. And economy is a very small part of our life or to earth. So what about the relationship between deforestation and SDGC and why I emphasize forest here? Hidden ways deforestation undermines SDG. When forestry are destructed, we face many problems. Health, poverty, hunger, energy, infrastructure, and life below water and on the earth. Then, if we have a good healthy forest, and forest support SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, and lead to carbon net zero, and income from forest products, fruit and trees and timbers, and climate change, climate, carbon capture and storage by the forest, and health, provide medicinal plants, and maintain biodiversity, and provide some good food and fruit and game, so we, and also clean water and fresh air. So here, I wish to emphasize SFM, Sustainable Forest Management and Reduce Deforestation. Degradation can enhance the forest contribute to achievement of SDG. Now, why, when did Earth appear? According to the scientists, it was 4.5 billion years ago. Initially, during the early beginning of the Earth, there was no life creatures due to high degree of CO2, carbon dioxide in the sky, about 97%. But nowadays, Since the, the vegetation, such as trees and grass, and appeared, the current level of carbon dioxide had been reduced while increasing the ratio of oxygen, 21%, and CO2 decreased to 0.036 point. So the life or creature appeared. How this happen? What we call photosynthesis. I believe you, you learn this concept in high school. Plants, include forest trees and grass, are absorbing and storing CO2. And with the sunlight and water and nitrogen from the ground, and they do some photosynthesis process and trees, forest produced old clean air, oxygen, and some moisture, and they provide shade and fruit leaves. This is all for human beings. So, forest is a source of carbon sink. Forest absorbs CO2 into plants and forests. So it shows the left figure. Long time ago, the, the sky was dark. It was not blue. A lot of CO2 in the sky. But the right shows the forest as a sink of carbon dioxide while Trees are growing, are forest growing, 
carbon dioxide accumulated in their bodies through carbon dioxide assimilation and lower the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And what happened? Then we have the clean sky, blue clean sky. So where did this CO2 go? See, trees grow, forests grow, but eventually they are dying. So, they will be fallen down and dead, and then under the geological change, you know, earthquake and other things, dead trees become fossil fuels when carbon dioxide accumulating in the earth. See, CO2s in the trees are now going down to the underground, and they became charcoal, coal, and gasoline, oil. So the sky is getting blue and clean. But at the same time, forest is source of carbon emission. How this happened? The carbon dioxide stored in trees and wood are consumed by human beings as energy source of heating and cooking and power generation. Remember, 18th centuries industrialization. And we developed steam engine. And we now use the coal and oil. So the forest are destroyed and deteriorated, at the same time, carbon dioxide is released into the sky. So the forest becomes source of carbon dioxide. See, because we use these fossil fuels as energy, and it was the main cause of the global warming. But to stop this global warming, we have to protect our forest and we have to use renewable energy, solar, wind, power, and save energy. And we have to keep a forest tending and plant or create new forest. And where is the forest? So now let's look at the distribution of global forest area. You see that the earth, the, most of the forest located in tropical areas. Um, Amazon and this Congo Basin in Africa and Southeast Asia, Indonesia and Malaysia. Thailand, Cambodia, Myanmar, Vietnam, and Papua New Guinea. And for your forest is 27%, and temperate, where I live, is 16%. So, the global forest is uh, about 4 billion hectares, and 7% is artificial planting forest, means we plant we built this forest is only 7%. And these tropical forests, 47% are disappearing. Why forest for climate change? IPCC estimated potential of various carbon removal approaches. According to them, a forestation and deforestation is one of the best source and they can absorb lots of CO2. And another is bioenergy with carbon capture and storage. So why tree plantation? The IPCC report, global warming of 1.5 degree report, immense and urgent challenge and risks related to climate change. 
to stop rise of two points Celsius degree. So forestry is a huge expectation for emission reductions in this sector globally. Only active sink means negative emissions. They absorb CO2. So there was a lot of initiatives around the world. One is bone challenge, means they want plant or create forest 350 million hectares ecosystem restoration until 2030. And Korea restored around 2 million hectares of forest and spent the cost of US dollar $3 billion. So IPCC 1.5 degree report for BECCS and afforestation together. And land demand in 2000 is around uh, 800, between 1,800 million hectares, mainly converted from pasture land. And, and this is this possible? So uh, planting trees, afforestation and reforestation, and BECCS, bioenergy with carbon capture and st stories. So costs and what role for it uh, realistically play. So let's look at go further. So now a little bit change the global warming and climate change. You didn't know the greenhouse effect. So solar radiation powers in the climate system. So the, the solar sunlight comes from the sun. And some solar radiation is reflected by the Earth and to atmosphere. But because of the CO2, they stay here, atmosphere. It protected, it stopped, it prevented free flow of this solar radiation. So where climate change started, greenhouse gas caused by activity of a human. When we talk about climate change or greenhouse gas, all this is related by human activity. This greenhouse gas, GHG, is produced by human activity. So this greenhouse gas is, is stopped, this flow, free flow of the infrared radiations, especially and the emission, carbon emission from tropical forest destruction account for 17, 20% of global emissions. So most of the first one is carbon dioxide, CO2, by transportation and, and power generation and forest destruction. So CO2 is number one source, and the other one is methane and nitrox and all of these things, the six gases. So let's look at the carbon cycle. You see, fossil fuel emissions, coal and gasoline, we produce or emit CO2 in the sky. See, coal, oil, and natural gas comes from the underground and biosphere, and they can capture and carbon store. That's why I said in the front, the biosphere is most important in the bot and then society and then economy. See, I also mentioned the photosynthesis. This photosynthesis not only just on the ground, the, these trees and, and grass, but also on the ground, aquatic biomass, ocean, carbon straw and then some on the ground, and then move around here. See here um, how this, the, uh, the volume of carbon is moving around 
from CO2, from this, the industrial and building transportation, we emit to the sky, and then trees absorb, and then the ocean absorb. But still, there are some remainings in the sky. And also, this global warming and climate change, temperatures goes up. You know, see the observed such temperature changes. But the thing is, some areas are, the temperature goes very high comparing to other areas. We know the global warming ice melt. There was some ice in the, on the peak, but all this ice disappeared due to global warming. Temperature rises. And at the same time, some other regions, areas, we faced unexpect, unexpected severe cold. I guess you remember some movies, an uncomfortable truth, or tomorrow, and this shows the New York. So one area, temperature goes up above 40 degrees, but in some other areas face this severe cold. And then rainfall. We observe changes in annual precipitations. Comparing to the 100 years, 1901 to 2010, but Recent 50, 60 years, there was more changes, and especially the United States and European countries and some Asian countries have more rainfalls and then floods. Remember last year? And some other areas like African countries severe drought, no rainfalls. And other impacts, higher temperature, more droughts, a changing rain and snow patterns changed, and wild weather, and less snowpack, and shrinking sea ice, iceberg and glaciers, and then increased ocean acidity and warm oceans and rising sea level. So here, what is the, the science of climate change? How do you feel the science of climate change? And why we don't say about weather? So what is the difference between climate and weather? Anybody can guess what is climate change and weather? differences. Whether it, it, in short term, so like a tomorrow's temperature or tomorrow rainfall. And when we mention climate change, it's a little longer time pattern, like uh, 30 years. The temperature go, goes up like for 30 years. Then we say, oh, there is a climate change and temperature goes up. Not just like yesterday, 10 degree and then minus 5 today. This is what we call the weather. So weather forecasting, not climate change forecasting. We see on TV is the weather forecasting. And then climate change means at least at 30 years, longer terms change. Then we can say, oh, this is a science of climate change. So told you some sea level rise, some the, the Pacific island, Tonga, they are disappearing. And also the desertification and drop, de degradation are expanding, especially China and Africa Sahel area. And also some the South America, Latin America and in southern part of Africa and also the, the 
uh, Australia and China, Mongolia, and even some uh, Middle East Asian countries. So what the international society is doing to deal with this climate change? The UNFCCC. And Forest International Convention. Let's narrow down the Forest International Convention first. In 1992, there was uh, some UNSET or Agenda 21 meeting in Rio Summit. So here, um, international society agreed to establish UNFCCC and CBD and UNCCD. UN Framework, Convention on Com Climate Change and Convention on Biological Diversity and UN Convention on combating desertification. And this time, 92, 1992, forest principles start and it changed to IPF and IPF, IFF but at the same time. In Montreal meetings, SFM, Sustainable Forest Management, was appeared. And 1993, forest certification system, forest stewardship certification was uh, evolved from the meeting. But as time goes, and 1997, there was no good result to solve these environmental problems. So in Kyoto Protocol 1997, there were some changes. And then 2015, there was a Paris Agreement to solve these climate change issues. And, and forestry, at Kyoto Protocol, the carbon credit in sustainable forest management and disappeared. And Paris Agreement 2015, the RDD, a big issue. And these tools can, we can achieve the sustainable forest management and we can keep, maintain good forest in the world. So, I mentioned two subsystems on the UNFCCC. UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. And Kyoto Protocol is 1997 and 37 developed countries. And they agreed during 2008-2012, comparing to 1990, they tried to reduce CO2 emission level average of 5.2%. But it is not easy to uh, reach this target. So they introduced joint implementation, JI, among the developed countries and CDM, Clean Development Mechanism, and ETS, Emission Trading Systems. And second period started in 2013 and 2020, two years ago, it finished. And the problem, this one was a top-down approach. So some secretariat, they set some target and then say the participating countries say, you achieve this target. If you don't achieve this target, and there was a penalty, but unfortunately, China, U.S. and India not join this Kyoto Protocol. So to solve any uh, urgent environmental issues and climate change, there was a movement among the countries and we have Paris Agreement. And this Paris Agreement well, the target year is 2020 to 2025, 2030 in short, and even 2050 in long term. And here there's some concept, NDC, 
no legal binding, no legal obligation. NDC is a nationally determined contribution. This is voluntary. So each country submit my target. I will reduce CO2 emission by this amount, by this 5%, 10%, 20%, voluntarily. And based on the Paris Agreement Article 4. And this is no legal obligation. This is some, some kind of some problems. And in Kyoto Protocol, only developed countries are responsible for this climate change environmental problems. But in Paris Agreement, responsibility is for all parties. So the CBDR, common but differential responsibility. So here now, developing countries also has some past, uh, responsibility. But respective capabilities and equity issues, and this is bottom-up approach and no penalty. But the, it's progressive. You cannot go back as progress. You should go further and no end point time. This is it's a voluntary and no penalty. So you try to avoid or evade this kind of the penalty, but your peer review, other countries are watching you. So global stock take monitoring every five years. Check what is your achievement, how much you achieve, how much you reduce your travel. So international society all together, they check your country. And all countries joined, but common but different responsibility, CBDR, and then try to control the temperature goes up two degrees, but now it's changed 1.5 degree. So we try to 1.5 degree. And important here, pillar, Six pillar, but important thing is mitigation, article number four, and sink and reserves, article five, and voluntary market and non-market based approach, article six, is most important and article. So here, let's look at carbon emission trading. How does it operate? Greenhouse gas are kept, then markets are used to allocate the emissions among the group of regulated sources. And credits can be exchanged between bridges or bought and sold in international market at current market price. Credits can be used to finance carbon reduction schemes between trading partners and around the world. So what is cap and trade? And polluters are given emissions limits so the A country, the government allocates company A, you can produce or you can emit this amount of CO2. So this is cap and trade. To exceed these limits, a company may buy emission credits from polluters that emit less than their limit. So this creates some kind of economic incentive for conserving. How does it work, cap and trade? So let's look at this graph. Company A has lower emission abatement costs. So the government allocate 15 megatons. But see, I can save some. I only emit or produce 5 megatons. I have some. And other countries, 15. So they can save some and they can sell. So company P purchase excess allowance from company A. So they are given to 10. So they have the 
uh, over five marathons. They have to buy five from other con company. So they buy five marathons from company A. So company B can achieve his target, 10. And here, uh, some uh, the carbon capture and storage, CCS, burying carbon deep in the earth. The practice of capturing carbon emissions from power plants and storing them on the ground is a promising technique in worldwide effort to reduce global warming. Remember, trees and forests, grass are one source of capturing carbon and stay in their bodies. And the other one is the ocean, sea. But this is not enough. So the CO2 is coming from the, the, the plants, chimney. So you collect, when the CO2 comes out of the, this chimney, you collect and capture and make a bricks and then put under the ground. So in this way, we can reduce this CO2 level. So basic idea, pump CO2 in the ground and instead of atmosphere, put it in the ground. So mitigation and adaptation. Mitigation is strategies for reducing the rate and magnitude of climate change and emission reduction and offsetting the effects of greenhouse gas emissions for forestry of forestation, deforestation, forest management, and reduced deforestation can help mitigation. And adaptation, strategies for coping with the climate change. You cannot do anything about this, uh, the abundant CO2. So efforts to limit our vulnerability to climate change impacts, such as erosion control, or heat and drought, digital egg crops, you develop some new species, varieties, and build coastal defense. When the sea level goes up, you build coastal fence. And mitigation Paris Agreement, recognizing the importance of the conservation and enhancement as appropriate, or sinks and reservoirs of the greenhouse gas refer to in the convention, and this is Article 4. And other is his Article 5, forest. Parties should take action to conserve and enhance, as appropriate, sinks and reservoirs of greenhouse gas, as referred to in Article 4, forests are included, and Article 6, mitigation. So now, Let's look at more closely the RDD plus and climate change. So the emergence of RDD plus during the, this negotiation process. See, in the absence of RDD program activities, carbon stocks, when you cut trees and destroy forest, you emit, produce CO2 into the sky and then this takes about 17%. But if you introduce, employ, use RDD activities, maintain with RDD activities, you cannot cut, but you preserve or protect the forest. You do not emit the CO2. This is business as usual. This is when you introduce CO2, this CO2, not go to the sky, but stay in the trees. So what is RDD plus? And here the countries have a capacity for implementation. And what is appropriate area? Now how to change them? How to check the change of results? And how to give an incentives? If I protect my forest, not cut, then what kind of incentives I can get from the others or from developed countries. 
benefits other than carbon? Now, how to ensure safeguard? And institutional arrangements, governance to support to coordinate the process. How it works? You know, standing forest, nothing happened, business as usual. We cut trees, destroy forest, CO2 goes up. But we employed RDD activity, then CO2 stay here. So let's, let's look at uh, history. In 2005, COP11 Montreal meetings, we did the proposal of Union Rainforest Nationals and RED, reduction of emission from deforestation, is approved and Costa Rica and Papua New Guinea proposed. And 2007, COP13 in Bali, forest degradation was unanimously included in the emission reduction strategy. So it changed into RDD, second D. And 2009, COP15 in Copenhagen, a provisional treaty signed on RDD. Plus, in 2010, COP16 in Cancun formally adopted the five RDD plus groups and emphasized the safeguard of RDD plus. So, reduce emissions from deforestation, reduce emissions from forest degradation, preserve carbon stocks, increase carbon stock of the forest. This five. So the, the RDD, the first goal of RDD Plus is to do, reduce emissions. But however, RDD Plus has the potential to provide many other benefits, like reducing poverty in the forest sector and conserving biodiversity and so on. And here deforestation is permanent or permanent conversion of forest land to non-forest land, agricultural land, and pasture land. Forest degradation is changes with the forest that have a negative impact on the structure or function of the forest or site conditions and reduce the ability to provide products or services. See how it, in Kyoto Protocol, the CDM, Clean Development Mechanism in 2001, and RDD Plus, and finally, 2013 and 2020, and on the Paris Agreement, there was some mechanism, CDM and SDM and joint implementation, the emission trading system, plus sustainable development mechanism cooperation approach was adopted. C, once again, reduce emission from deforestation is RED, and reduce emission from forest degradation is RETD. So expand a little, and then conservation of forest carbon stocks, conservation and sustainable management of forest SFM, and enhancing carbon stock, planting trees. So RDD plus five factors. So activities, changes in forest area, reduce negative change, avoid deforestation. Positive change of forestation and deforestation. And carbon density, carbon per hectare, avoid degradation, and sustainable forest management and conservation. Increase. So here there is some four pillar, four factors. To implement RDD implementation, we need, or any countries should have this national strategy or action plan, or forest reference emission level, or national forest forest monitoring system, and then safeguard information system. So this is the RDD plus framework, national strategy action plans, or forest reference level, or forest emission level. And then an MRB, monitoring, reporting, verification, and safeguard information system, SIS. And UN RDD program, what are the others? They have a national strategy and reference level, monitoring system, safeguard. And then they were, you know, you have to prepare some 
what was the cause of driver of deforestation and others, and MRB, all these things. In RDD program, there are some, you know, the jurisdictional or subnational RDD program. There is, you know, project level, one by one, some from stand alone forest project. It's a project. And then you expand this one, like a jurisdictional or subnational level. RDD plus take a large national or state provincial scale, entire jurisdiction. Why? If you uh, introduce the RDD from A reason, then people move to B reason. So there is a leakage problems. So to avoid this leakage problem, not just one project level, but some kind of jurisdictional or national level, RDD is better. So RDD scale and benefits. So local approach by project or national watch program, and then some you know integrated approach that combines characteristics of local approach and national approaches. So a concept is some project and jurisdiction. What's differences? Some cost. In jurisdiction level is much cheaper. And the leakage, there is some possibility. But in big project, we can avoid this one. But monitoring in a small project is a higher cost and great uncertainty at a small scale. But at a big scale or jurisdictional advances satellite coverage with greater certainty and lower cost in Haktar. And RED programs in Korea, some in Indonesia, and Cambodia, Myanmar, Laos. But Cambodia case is very, you know, good, simple uh, pilot case. And Kampong Tom, and 2015, 2021, and 70,000 hectares. So we provide some, you know, the stakeholders, the, the villages, some alternative income source, honey, and also support the community forest. So we uh, save almost 600,000 CO2. But there is some problems or concerns for RDD, such as the World Land Forest Movement, the NGO, they you know, strongly argue that single artificial forest is not a forest, it is a farm. And also, you know, the, the stakeholders or the villagers, people, cannot use any forest source because this area is protected by RDD program, means no one can go inside freely. So the, the indigenous people or villagers are now has some problems to use these forest resources. So they are against this one. So who are stakeholders? The stakeholders are groups who have a share or interest in or right in the forest, those who will be negatively or positively affected for RDD activities. So the, the, the lastly, what about the carbon market? There is a voluntary carbon market so far. And then some the JCM, the Joint Credit Mechanism by Japan. This is a bilateral level and VCS program in voluntary market. VCS program is the world's most widely used voluntary greenhouse gas program. And more than uh, 1,335 VCS projects have collectively reduced or removed more than 200 million tons of carbon and other CO greenhouse gas emissions from the atmosphere. And the other one is Green Climate Fund, GCF. This is established by 194 countries that are part of the UNFCCC in 2010. And their pilot project for RBP, result-based payment. If you save some amount of CO2, then you will get paid. So reduction from uh, 2013 to 2018, five years. And then $500 million. 
and each one ton CO2 equivalent is five dollars. So Brazil receives ninety six million, Ecuador, Chile sixty three million US dollars, and Indonesia one hundred three million US dollars. They receive this one by RDD program. And challenges RDD plus. How to there are some problems. How to set reference scenario baseline? How to prevent leakage? If you protect this area, people go to the B area and then burn and cut the trees. That's the problem. How to secure permanence? How to monitor the deforestation accurately, cost effectively? How to deal with the degradation of forest? So here is some benefit of tree plantation. Reduce risk of disease and health, and some calculation, total benefit. And safety net in times of crisis, like this time, people go to the, in, the, in the forest, or planting, tree planting, you know, food, housing, fuels, income for 20% of global population, related with the forest and trees. And also restoring forest, you mean planting trees for job creation. Like if you spend one dollar in restoration and you will get eight dollars response. Any problems in tree plantations? See, this Ethiopian case, they said two million trees together we can. Even 300 53 million trees in 12 hours. Ethiopia breaks tree planting world record. And this Prime Minister, Ethiopia, he received Nobel Prize by planting trees. But tree plantation is one good source I didn't mention some, you know, the issues, problems under this RDD. What to do with RDD plus? You have to think about and how to work together to keep, maintain this clean environment. This is not easy and there is no one solution. Tree planting is one of them not the good solution. So today, I introduce and I explain some of economic development, climate change, the role of forest, and the international convention meetings, and plus RDD plug programs, positive side and negative side. Now it's up to you. You can work further and then what you can contribute to keep, maintain, clean our environment. Thank you very much.